Ah, yes. What's good, everybody? And welcome to the seventh NFL preview show. It's also VM's birthday. Happy birthday, VM. Six years in the making. My guy, Impy, sitting across from me. What's good? What's going on? Yo, you look, you look, you look good, man. You uh, came in nicely dressed. Rode the scooter. Rode the scooter. Electric. Scooter gang. You know, not mo <laughs> not not uh, gas. <laughs> Trying to save the environment. Trying to save the environment. And then my guy A double. Oh, so. It looks like you came for a barbecue. You know. Okay. I put put the put the put the slacks on. Mm. Yeah. Trousers in the heat. Trousers. You look good, man. Thanks, bro. I didn't shave. I'm probably gonna be licking my mustache nonstop. I have a bad habit. Yeah. I hate it. That's fine. Usually, if you just if you just shave the neck, yeah, you'd be good. Yeah, yeah let's see what happens. Sometimes, whenever like I need like I'm going to get a haircut this week, so that's why it's a little like thick over here. Mm-hmm. But if you just trim your beard or your neck, it keeps it a little bit nice. Hold, you holds know? it over for a little yeah, while. Yeah, 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 for a little bit, fellas. This is a uh, big episode, deep dive of all the teams in the NFL. Um. Some teams we're going to spend more time than others, and yeah. rightfully so. But the, I really enjoy this because it's the one time of year where I really like to go balls deep into the season. <laughs> love me futures. Love me predictions and the whole nine. Alan, I want to throw this to you first before we get started, man. What are your thoughts on this season coming up? Because it's a pretty unique one. Yeah, it's about as unpredictable has it been in quite some time i think both the afc and nfc you have i would say three main contenders with i think more on the nfc side uh more I guess, above average teams you could say so i definitely think there's going to be a lot of fluctuation between you know who are the top teams some competitive divisions you look at the nfc west which should be as ridiculous uh, last year was ridiculous but i think it's even got better this year uh afc north should be really good so i don't think like there's a true favorite right now. I think it's fairly balanced, which is what you always want. And with the amount of rookie quarterbacks coming to lead, that's just going to build more intrigue. Uh, I think the only thing you're kind of skeptical of is just the extra game and how is it going to affect teams. But you know, that we're going to have to see come December, January. Would you not say that the AFC is stronger than the NFC, though? I think it's more top-heavy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that, too. I feel like the top three teams in the AFC are better than the top three teams in the NFC. But maybe one through seven is probably more balanced and not top heavy, but better teams in the yeah. NFC side. That's fair. Because you look at the NFC West, like it's just all four of those teams you can make a strong case for. Even if you're not too crazy by Arizona, there's no denying Arizona has legit talent. Yeah, no, that's fair. I was just curious to see what you guys thought about that. Yeah. What about you? Outlook on this season? Yeah, um, I'm. In, uh, it's tough because as, as much as I, I mean, I will talk about, you know, predictions and all that, but um, I'm really, I'm, I'm really fascinated to see uh, w- what shakes out in the NFC because to your point, some of these divisions are stacked mm-hmm. and some of them, you really don't know what you're going to get either. Like the South, for example. So uh, I, I really don't know. Um, I'm interested. I think COVID is going to throw a huge curveball into the season two with vaccinated players and unvaccinated players. And I'm not sure at what point you wanted to talk about that. I know we will cover it. Um, but I think the league is really putting an emphasis on players getting vaccinated. And the signs are, you know, it's, you, you pretty much can't do anything if you're inv- not vaccinated. And so, um, you know, as the season progresses and as these games get more and more important, it's going to be critical to see, you know, who's handling this the right way. Because even if you're exposed to someone and you don't even test positive, you could, be, you could miss that entire week. Mm-hmm. And so I just I, I'm really fascinated to see how how that piece of it shakes out as well. Even though they're at ninety three percent, from what I've heard. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you want to talk about the Buffalo Bills wide receiver core? They're not vaccinated, or, or not the uh, two of the I think five receivers or two of the six Bills receivers well, aren't. Then McKen- McKenzie just got it. He after he yeah. just got fined oh, yeah. fifteen thousand, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Nick wanted to touch on uh, Kirk Cousins later on. He's right. not vaccinated. There's other players as well. Got Cam Lamar. Newton for Cam Newton, Lamar, like, yeah. and at b- critical positions too. You know mm-hmm. who 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 potentially could be in the playoff hunt mm-hmm. right. and so i just think that is like really really you know uh critical and, and i'm interested to see what happens yo it's it's a big subplot of this entire season and check this shit out i don't know if you guys saw it but there's this dude called spot rack on social media yep he's he's big on like breaking down contracts and what they mm-hmm. mean and the whole nine so he tweeted out well, it's not a website i don't think it's a person track. 
Yeah, I don't think that's sport. A... No, no, it's spot. I'm looking at the spot. Twitter right now. Oh, bro. there's no R. No, no, there's oh, no R. Okay. Spot okay. rack. Yeah, okay. but it is a website yeah. too. It is a website. So this dude tweeted out. If a 2021 NFL game cannot be played due to a COVID outbreak stemming from unvaccinated players testing positive, listen to this shit. No player on either team will be paid. So this is why other players are like, yo, bro, look, listen, man, you got to get vaccinated because I'm trying to get my money too. Mm -hmm. So you got that. The team with the outbreak will forfeit and the other team will will win. Mm -hmm. So you have that dilemma too. Imagine it's like week 15, Falcons playing the Giants, you Mm -hmm. know, hypothetical here. And the Giants need this game to win. There's an outbreak for the Giants. Falcons go on and win. The Giant players that are vaccinated be like, yo, what the fuck? Yep. We just played all these weeks. And this is the this is the good one. The team with the outbreak will cover all financial losses for both teams. Yeah. I mean, that's that's crazy. So I you're have gonna no hit idea. Him, you're going to hit them where it hurts. Yeah. The pockets. The pockets. Yeah. So I, I, I also think they're really just making it extremely inconvenient. And I'll, bring you, I'll give you another example. For those of you who don't know, the preseason was only three weeks this season. Mm -hmm. This week, there's kind of like a bye week in a way where players, if you are vaccinated, you're actually able to leave your city and go wherever you want and enjoy your time, right? But if you're not vaccinated, you have to go to the site. You have to go to the your your camp or your 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 building and get uh, tested every single day. And so, just like the freedom to be able to kind of live your life, like granted, it's a grind during the football season. But it really kind of just hampers you, and it's extremely inconvenient as well. Imagine having to go to your office every day mm. and get tested. Like the whole Cam Newton thing was interesting too, because Cam Newton got tested. He just didn't get tested in his in the building, in the Patriots building, and that's why he had to miss five days. So they're really, really, really putting an emphasis on all of these players getting vaccinated. And to your point, they're hitting you in the pockets in addition to making you sit out if you you know if you're exposed to or or whatever the case is. So. Um, I think I just, it's crazy. Everyone get the shot, man. What do you, I didn't exactly tell you guys what division we were going to start with and like what order, but I feel like we should open up with the NFC North if that's cool with you guys, because one of the talking points that I do have about the Vikings is this situation with the vaccine. Kirk Cousins is against it. What happens, Alan, if, you know, say... Say from now, you're making your predictions about Minnesota being a wild card team, and then there's an he gets COVID, he misses two games. That don't influence you? I think Kirk Cousins is expendable. He's been expendable. Okay, that's fair. I think he could get benched at some point this year. For Kellen, for Kellen Mond, baby. I think Mike Zimmer's fed up. Mm. He was fed up last season at times. I thought it was similar to like. Yeah, obviously he wouldn't say publicly a name, but it was a little bit similar to what Sean McVay was saying about Jared Goff. He would say the quarterbacks turned the ball over too much. The quarterbacks limiting us. Like you, There were signs last year that McVay was beyond fed up of Jared Goff, and look what happened in January. I remember the Dolphins game where I think he turned it over three times. That was a big one. Um, Minnesota's a run-first team. They got arguably top three best receiving trio in the league. I just think Cousins, is he's a systematic quarterback. We've seen that for years. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's a huge loss for them at all. You know, I maybe Kelman is a downgrade due to lack of experience, but you don't think with uh, Minnesota's coaching staff they'll just give the cook 25, 30 times and make do with it. I think the defense is going to be much better in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you expect that with a Mike Zimmer defense, but between the between the injuries and between the and the, and the opt outs last year, it can't get worse. But I don't know how much better it's going to get. I'm not really convinced they, by their veteran signings. They, they did have a lot of injuries though, they on did. and it was a young defense too. Because I remember early on playing DFS, it was like, "Yo, target the DBs on Minnesota." Yeah. And then towards like the last five to six games, they started playing a lot better because they got their feet wet. You get Hunter back. Sheldon Richardson comes back. And you get Patrick Peterson. Oh, I don't think Sean Richardson's on the team. Yeah, I'm almost positive. Is they brought he? him in. Yeah. Okay. I know Michael Pearson, uh, Dalvin Thompson. Is no, no. And they, and they brought, and they brought uh, yeah. uh, Richardson back I'm, as I'm well. not crazy about Patrick Peterson signing or Bashawn Breeland. I think those two players are kind of their best days are behind them. I, of course, Patrick Peterson's not going to be a lockdown corner anymore. But getting him at this point in his I, career I, for a listen. young defense, being able to kind of you know, Patrick it can't Peterson. be worse than last year. That's what I'll say with the Vikings. D. I just don't know if they're going to reach like the true top ten level that a Mike Zimmer defense you would expect. But but look, if they could finish in the middle of the pack, and that offense should be pretty damn elite. No, <sighs> elite, uh, no. pretty damn solid. I, yeah, I, I, it's going to be productive. Great O, go great O line. Uh, solid O line. 
I don't know where. Not no. okay. Nah, Not I hear. I agree with you on this, like the weapons. Yeah, and the skills. Look, they yeah. just lost Irv Smith for the first month. It seems like. Right. Yeah. So that's gonna be a little devastating because they let go of Kyle Rudolph. He's on the Giants now, and he's been a dude who like the fantasy darlings have loved Love. him because he'll step in and he'll get like eight targets and mm-hmm. shit like that. Now he he's gonna be out for a couple of weeks. They did address a lot of their big additions were to the defense. And they spent the first round pick on an offensive tackle who hasn't practiced at all yet. Yeah, I had that in my notes too, which is very concerning yeah. for sure. Now, the thing with them is, I think there has to be like, reg- if it's regression in a positive way, that's not. What is that? You know when they say like optimism. Oh, you know when they say like, oh, yo, there's going to be touchdown regression because this guy scored 18 touchdowns. Yeah, like Adam right? Thielen scored 14 last year. There's right. There's going to be a regression. Yeah, yeah. On his, so what is that when it's in the positive? I think like, say, like Cooper Cup only had two touchdowns last year. I think it, it should be an increase. So if the Vikings are saying positive regression, their defense, their defense statistically improve, can't, yeah. be, it can't be worse. And also, you, yo, Mike Zimmer has a better, you'll like this, mm-hmm. has a better against the spread record since he started being a head coach in the NFL than any other head coach in the entire league. Interesting. I think he's on the hot seat. As much as everyone loves Mike Zimmer, I think Ooh. I think uh, just based on Minnesota, they've kind of had the same roster for quite some time now, and they've made the playoffs here and there, made a couple of runs, but uh, you missed the playoffs back-to-back years considering what the Vikings roster looks like. A lot of their top players in their prime, they might just say time is time is now because even in 2019 like there was talks of Zimmer getting fired if they didn't beat the Saints there was rumors all they just might want a new start and sometimes you need a new start it's not an indictment on Zimmer everyone knows he's a great coach but eventually it's time to move on it's what Carolina do with Ron Rivera and that's what mm-hmm. Minnesota might have to do now with uh, Mike Zimmer they did get Richardson they brought Richardson, oh, they got Richardson. Yeah, okay. with Tomlinson right and Michael yeah. Pierce is coming back he took a year off he was a great run stuffer in Baltimore Hunter they just Monster. re-signed uh, Harrison Smith yeah. yeah, you bring in Patrick Peterson. I don't know why you're so down on this defense, and you have an elite. Everson defense. Griffin's back too, which is hilarious. Considering if you looked at his old tweets bashing Kirk Cousins, he had to apologize to. Him. I'm just saying you were right about the offensive line. I misspoke, yeah. but you don't think with with the pieces around Cousins and I, look, I'm not like the biggest Vikings guy at all. I'm just saying. Oh, I love the Vikings. I but think I'm not <laughs> I think there's more to this team than people are giving them credit for. They're and I think be the good. De- it's yeah, just I think the how defense good be, yeah. in the NFC you have to. You have to win double-digit games to make the playoffs. Maybe with the seventh seed, they could get in. But there's still a decent amount of concerns. Yeah. I think the defense is going to be much improved. Okay. And I think they're going to be underrated with all these pieces. Last year, they went 7-9. and nine. They were 6-4 and four in one-score games. This year, they're favored in nine of the 16 games. The kicker is they haven't put out lines for the 17th game yet. There's always these advanced lines. Look-ahead lines, I should say. They, because at the time when they put these lines out, they didn't know. Um, where do you have Minnesota finishing in the north? Behind Green Bay. You? Yeah, second place, no wild card. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not sure yet. I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat, man. I got Green Bay going 11 and 6, which I'm still trying to figure out these records. Just like, yeah, you I'm got them more? Yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about okay, it. Okay, so I have a, uh, this is, this was a concern for me i don't know if i should say a concern but like how do you measure what a good quarterback is um is there a certain stat is it like no nah, i think like how how successful you can be without elite weapons around you like can you carry an offense like are you depending on the scheme around you okay that's are, fair you know what i mean like, yeah 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 like, that's what we were talking about a few weeks ago like I say maybe there's seven quarterbacks in the NFL that are kind of like they don't need a scheme to be successful or maybe a little bit of a scheme like a Lamar Jackson yeah. as an example, right? You're thinking about Mahomes, uh, uh, Josh Allen, uh, Rogers, uh, Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, Brady, right? Yeah. There's like there's like five five to seven guys. Anyway, it's a small number. Though. Yeah, yeah. But it's the guys who don't need that much around them. The guys that elevate people around them. Okay. Where you're kind of not scheme dependent. How about you? He pretty much nailed it. I just also want to see a quarterback to handle adversity. How they handle pressure. How can they come back in uh, multi-score deficits? Like that's why I look at. You can't just be a quarterback that's 
depending on play action all the time, someone that's playing with the lead, you gotta eventually be able to. When well, your team goes down, you gotta be able to eventually carry them forward. I mean, I don't. I mean, I agree, except the whole play action thing. Like some offense are predicated on. Yeah, absolutely. Running, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's just when you're when you're behind, then you can't be relying on. Play yeah, action. I hear what a, you're saying. You gotta be able to drop back and throw the ball 40, 45 times if your team yeah. asks you to do it. So that that's that's my whole basis of it. It's Is just. That, yeah. Are you asking because Kirk Cousins' stats are very underrated? No, nah, I'm asking because like so Rogers, right? He comes off this MVP season and look Rogers is fantastic he's probably the him and Mahomes are probably the most talented quarterbacks I've ever seen play Mm -hmm. the position not saying that they're the best though they're not slouches but as far as talent wise I think they're the best ones that I've ever seen now Brady is the most accomplished but with that being said if we're using QBR and I don't know how you guys feel about QBR but if we were to use that as like a metric to measure how good a quarterback has been last two seasons 16th and 20th Aaron Rodgers Last year, wins MVP. He was basically average or worse the two years prior. So he didn't have good like, years. that's why they drafted. That's he, why they drafted Love. Not, not so, but he like he wasn't particularly good. Like so, it, it, it was, he was well below his standards. Also got hurt. No, I was twenty. No, but I'm saying like he was hurt, and then 2017. I think it was hurt. Yeah, and then you're saying 2018, 2019. No, yeah. does that not play anything to? It? Does that not play into it at all? Well, it was a serious shoulder injury. That's fair. And then the the coaching staff obviously things fell out. With McCarthy first year with Lafleur didn't quite go well, so it's not understandable. But look, Aaron Rodgers. And then he look he bought he bought into the offense, and then look what happened. MVP season. Yeah, I think a lot of it had to do with Rodgers' mindset too. Like it was the FU season. I remember everyone was talking about that because McCarthy had left, and now it's yeah. Well, no, the oh no, that was two years prior. My yeah. bad. I yeah, think yeah. I think he just really bought into the offense. You know what I mean? Oh uh, no, I, I was on to to something. It was the fu season to the front office because the they office spent the, the first round pick love. on yeah. Jordan Love. Mm-hmm. So look, they make no additions, no key additions really, because that's that's usually what Green Bay does. Last year they were thirteen and three, four and two in one score games, and they're favored in nine of their sixteen games. Now, they lost Lindsley. And I think that's going to be a pretty important piece when you lose your center. But, look, it's just hard. I think this division is not going to be that good. I mean, I'm not high on Minnesota and Chicago, which we'll get to Chicago in a little bit. But I just think that with Rodgers, as long as he's healthy, the floor for this team is 11 wins, Yeah, especially with this extra game. So I got them winning the North Mm -hmm. at 11 wins. I I have them winning the division, too. I want to just say one thing. I think the defense is, is... is going to be better this year. Agreed. They bring over Joe Barry from the Rams, who was an assistant, uh, uh, who was assistant coach and a coordinator with the Rams. Mm-hmm. They bring him over to be the defensive coordinator. He replaces Mike Pettin. Um, look at that defense. They underachieve. You got the Smith brothers. You have a top five corner in Jair Alexander. Um, they got young players emerging. I, they, you have Gar- get, Rashawn Gary, right? Yeah, he who was looking like a real nasty piece. They got uh, Darnell Savage is really emerging. Darnell Savage is a great safety. Yeah, Amos. I think they're just a very. I think they were an underachieving unit that I really do think can shock some people this year with a great coordinator that comes in. I I think this team, to your point, if Roger stays healthy, I think they could win like thirteen games. Because uh, because I think the defense is so underrated, and I think what what a, what a new voice in the room. I, I think they're going to be much improved. I totally agree. So so we all have them as our one seed yeah. In, yeah. in that division, at least? Well, yeah, one seed in yeah. the division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, Chicago. They football, uh, football insiders say they have the hardest schedule in the NFL. Bears not having Trubisky alone, I think, is going to improve them, especially if they go with fields. <laughs> but hold on. Is he – is is Trubisky – uh, is is Dalton an upgrade from Trubisky? Yeah. Yeah. How much of an upgrade? Not not okay. Substantial. Just, yeah, just mean, checking. Just wanted to it's, ask. It's first. just Trubisky missed routine throws. Like he, you couldn't trust him to make even the most ordinary throws. I think Dalton's capable. Yeah. Of that, of, so. of of the of yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Man, I kind of feel like we're we're talking about two just jobbers because I felt like Dalton was gonna step in for Dak and sort of be productive because of the weapons that he had around mm-hmm. him. And that was a nightmare as well. That was the offensive line, though. That's yeah, true, yeah. Losing yeah. Smith and Martin, yeah. We'll get to Dallas in a bit. But I feel like they need to go with Fields 
because it's an unknown, right? Like, how many times have we seen a young quarterback come in and there's no tape of him, especially a guy like him who's mobile and he has the big arm and he's, I mean, he's looked better than Dalton has in preseason. Now you can make the argument that, all right, he's not playing number ones and all that shit, but still, man, sometimes the eye test, it just passes. And to me, Fields passes the eye test. I just, I think Chicago is a team that maybe this time next year we're talking about them taking the next step. If Fields is entering that year two, that year two leap that we like to always spotlight. But for now, I kind of feel as if, yeah, I know they made the playoffs last year, but no one was afraid to play them. So to me, it, it was kind of an underwhelming team that made the playoffs because of that seventh seed. But I got them going six and 11. Yeah, that's fair. Matt I, Nagy's on the ultra hot seat. I don't know about that. You don't think so? I th- think because them, uh, as, as crazy as it sounds, making the playoffs probably bought them time. That was my argument when we recorded last time. No, I think from the Chicago front office point, because the Chicago is not a very well-run organization, and I think this Fields trade, Fields trade probably bought him some time as well. So, no, I don't think I don't think Nagy's job, unless things go drastically wrong, is in any danger. I think there's some sort of footing he's got there. Like I think there's far more coaches that are bigger hot seats than him. Matt Nagy as a head coach is 28 and 20. I know it doesn't seem like it's a lot, but it's mm. twenty eight and twenty, and he's made the playoffs that, twice. That first year was big with with what who with what quarterback? Right. Yeah. So no, you I, could say all you want about the defense, and I agree. It's, it, at times, it's great, right? Where I'm not. Well, twenty eighteen, it was the best. Yeah, yeah, by, yeah. by a wide margin. I'm just saying that he, that I I, th- I don't think it's fair to say that he's on the hot seat because he's I think he's overachieved with the rosters that he's had, at least at the quarterback position. That's good. I think it's just people are. Unhappy with Nagy just because it feels like he's mishandled things at times. And, like, Chicago's been on primetime games, and they've it feels like every time was, like, the worst game possible. So I think whenever your team's on primetime and they have some of the worst games, no snow leave those games against the Rams, it's going to kind of inflate reputation. So I don't think Nagy's done a horrible job, but you've got to see something more from him this year. But I think Chicago's front office are going to let him ride for at least another year or two. It's just like, what could you – it's like, he's done – I mean, again, taking the defense out of this, he's done a lot with not much. It's just also personnel decisions, like, and it goes back to Ryan Pace too. Like their decisions, like giving <laughs> they G- it, Jimmy yeah. Graham two years, sixteen million dollars. Like Jimmy Graham isn't good in four years. Yeah, like, why it's, it's decisions like that? No, no, you're right. No, yeah. it's um, I mean, I li- I mean, I, I li- do you like the Damian Williams signing? Do you like anything that they did in the off season? I'm I I'm not I'm mad that they didn't resign Kyle Fuller. He's gone. Yeah, uh, big, I think that's a, good because Montgomery, you don't want to rely on so much. I think Montgomery quality had a very good year, but at the same time, it's like you need depth. Like they had nobody behind last year, so that, yeah. that was a good signing. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, Montgomery won people some playoff games yeah. in fantasy, or got te- got some teams into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. fantasy last year. I, th- I just think I just think Justin Fields opens up the playbook. Obviously, oh, yeah. oh know, for with, sure, with, yeah. And look, people it. are high on Mooney. Mooney's a big popular guy to take the next step. And you got Allen Robinson there, Cole Komet. People are expecting some big things from. But again, I feel like if if you think their offensive line is shaky, do you? Well, they just signed Jason Peters, who's thirty nine, could be forty nine years old. He, yeah. So it, if, it's offense line is definitely a problem. Then I feel like that gives more reason. For Fields to start. A mobile quarterback, a mobile quarterback, that quarterback the to pocket. alleviate yeah. some of that pressure. Yeah. It'll no, happen. I agree. I got them at 6 and 11. It's a big swing, depending on how long they keep the Andy Dalton leash on. I think that, they'll be I think slightly that really better. Did. Yeah, 7 yeah, and I, 10. I could see 7, 10, 8, and 9. Yeah. You said they have a tough schedule, though, right? 